Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Anthony from The Basement Reef. And if this is your first time tuning into our channel, we're a retail aquatic pet store and houseplant shop located in Columbia, Missouri. And here on this channel, we talk about all manner of things related to both of those hobbies. Today, I really wish I had a happy video to share with you guys, but the truth is, I just don't. Being an aquatic pet store, most of the things that we sell are alive, and unfortunately, that means that things can go wrong in a hurry. Just like they can in your tanks at home, it can happen here in the store too. And this week, that's exactly what has happened. We're dealing with something known as brown jelly disease. If you've never heard of it before, brown jelly disease is something that's been known to Aquarius for a long time, but the exact cause and a surefire cure has never quite been pinpointed. It happens in saltwater aquariums, and it affects mostly large polyp stony corals, especially euphilia and fimbriophilia. So that's your torches, hammers, frog spawns, and things like that. I have a pretty good idea how this all started, and now it's finally under control. But I have a few things to share with you guys about how we battled it, and there should be some insightful things in there. A little bit about how to avoid it, uh, something that we did to help slow it down, uh, and a couple of possibly novel observations. So let's get to it. Let's begin by taking a look at these three colonies of torch corals shortly after they arrived in our store. We prepared this video of them to advertise on our Facebook. As you can see, they were some maricultured torches from Bali, meaning that they were grown in the ocean. I think this is important to note, but more on that later. They were beautiful. They came in with absolutely no signs of any problems, and for about the first 48 hours, that really continued to be the case. On about day three, however, I walked into a problem. It seemed small at first, but quickly turned into a larger one. Essentially what had happened is that our Paracoronactus here, who is quite predatory and packs a nice sting, had reached over and tried to eat one of the heads of one of the torch colonies. Annoying for sure, but only one head was damaged. No big deal, right? Well, wrong. This is what that colony looked like a couple hours later and this ran through multiple torch colonies in our system through the next 48 to 72 hours or so. You can see that all of the tissue of the coral has completely necrotized, and those little brown filaments coming out are what the brown jelly actually is. Well, as far as people can tell. That's the weird thing about brown jelly. The cause has never really been isolated. People have been able to find different types of bacteria and small organisms called ciliates in this slime, but it's stuff that's always present in a reef tank. It's not unique to this infection. You can take a sample of almost any aquarium water and find some of this stuff. So is there another pathogen at play? It's kind of hard to say, because honestly, when a euphelia head dies for any reason, it looks kind of like this. So does that mean that brown jelly could simply be misattributed and it's just a symptom of any number of things that have killed the euphelia? Possibly, and I think that happens sometimes, but I don't think that's the whole story. It's definitely pathogenic in my eyes. You see that brown slime? If that lands on another coral, it gets infected about 95% of the time in my experience. And when that happens, it dies really quickly. Another thing that's indicative of a pathogen in my eyes. Another thing that would point towards it being a pathogen to me is that oftentimes many corals, even other euphelia, remain totally unaffected in the tank. If it was something with parameters, you'd think that all of these corals would be affected too, but they're not. These made it through this event unscathed, while other colonies were complete losses in a matter of hours. So what did we do about this? The first thing was aggressively cut down and throw out any heads that we think were infected. After that, we took a cue from the real life pandemic and socially distanced our corals. All of our euphelia colonies are now spread out and this more than anything else has seemed to slow it down. Early on in the infection, we tried dipping these corals in an iodine dip. That's something you see a lot of suggestions for online and people report some success. What we quickly noticed though, is that you would put a coral in the dip with only one infected head and it would come out of the dip with all of the heads infected. So we quickly abandoned that and moved to our aggressive removal and social distancing strategy. After losing many coral heads over the course of just a couple of days, it's now been three or four days with no losses. This is great, but I'm still left with a couple of questions. If it's a pathogen, how come it seems to start with an injury from this paracoronactus? Also, remember how I noted this was a maricultured coral earlier? Well, in my experience, that's always where this infection comes from. My personal theory 
is that the mayor culture torches are grown so close together that there's some pathogen that's just allowed to get up to high enough numbers that it becomes an issue. Similar to ick and fish, and how it's present in the ocean, but only in captivity when it's able to get up to huge numbers that it becomes this fatal, awful disease. So how can we avoid this in the future? Simply put, a better quarantine procedure for our corals. We've gotten away with the lax one for far too long. We'll probably take that frag tank that we put together a few videos ago and turn that into our landing zone for the corals. We don't want this to happen again. Trust me, I hate losing all these euphilia. And I hate even more that we can't sell the surviving ones until we're sure this is over with. And that takes us to where we are today. I wish we had a better idea what happened. And it's certainly frustrating losing a couple hundred dollars worth of coral. But I think we did learn a few things. Most importantly, that we need to set up a better quarantine system for our corals. But also when it comes to brown jelly, I think that I have a little bit better idea how it works and what it is. Obviously this was all anecdotal and not scientific. I didn't look at any of this under a microscope or anything like that. But I leave this situation with the general feeling that it is indeed a pathogen. And the biggest thing I think that helped was removing the infected heads and separating all the colonies away from each other. Hopefully you found this video informative. It's obviously not one I wanted to shoot, but as soon as this situation popped up in the store, I knew it was something we needed to make a video about. Because looking at forums and stuff like that, brown jelly is something that a lot of people have problems with. And when you Google it, there's not a whole lot of wonderful resources out there. Partially because it is such a mystery. Hopefully this is indeed the end of our troubles with it. Until next time though, this is Anthony from The Basement Reef. And please subscribe to our channel.